The factor label method strikes fear into the hearts of many high school students, but we're going to show you five easy strategies, five easy steps to mastering the factor label method. Step one. Um, so there's basically what this is. It's five different um, types of factor label problems that you'll have to do. The first type, step one, is a simple scale conversion. Now this means just going to a smaller or larger unit within the same system of measurement. So converting two and a half meters to millimeters, for example. In this case, we're starting with two and a half meters. Now, as always, we start with the quantity that we're given. Uh, over here, we can write the goal or the, the units that we're trying to get to. And then the conversion factor becomes the equivalence between the unit we start with and the unit we're trying to get to. And of course, we, we have the unit we start with over here, and then we put that same unit on the denominator of the conversion factor. And in this case, it's one meter is a thousand millimeters, and it's very simple conversion. That's called a scale conversion. That's the first type. Step two, these are um, simple system conversions. So what I mean by that is we're converting from one system of measurement to another. So from the English system to the metric system, for example. Convert 6.0 inches to centimeters, given the fact that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. So we start with 6.0 inches, and we're going to multiply by that conversion factor. Now notice here that the conversion factor is simply kind of a fractional form of this equivalence here of 2.54 centimeters to one inch. And we could write this as it's reciprocal also, but in this case, since we want to cancel inches, we want inches in the denominator. So we want 2.54 centimeters over one inch. Then the inches cancel, as we've gone over in class, and we end up with 15 centimeters. That's a simple, um, what we might call an inter-system conversion. And step three, the third type, is a dimensional conversion. In this case, we're converting from one type of dimension to another. Now this is where a lot of students get tripped up. Convert six grams of gold to cubic centimeters. Grams is a mass, cubic centimeters is a volume. So how can you convert, how can you change a mass into a volume? They're two totally different things. The way that you can do that is with a density. So if you have something called a density, you can convert from grams to cubic centimeters. If you have a speed, you can convert from distance to time and so on. So there are special conversion factors that can allow you to convert from one type of dimension to another. So we're starting with 6.0 grams. That's the quantity we're given. Notice we're not starting with the 19.3. You could, but it's more um, kind of error prone to start that way. There's, there's a greater chance of error. So we're going to start with 6.0 grams. And then we're going to use this conversion factor in the appropriate orientation. Notice I have one cubic centimeter. That's because 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter is the same thing as saying 19.3 grams per one cubic centimeter. So and now I've inverted it here because I want to cancel the grams, so I want the grams in the denominator. And you can see I've called this a dimension conversion. I'm converting from mass into volume. Okay, so I've got I end up with 0.31 with the correct number of significant digits. That's the third type of conversion. The fourth type is if we combine two of those. So in this case, I've got a two-step combo. I'm converting from 2.5 meters to inches. Now, it might seem like a simple um, inter-system conversion, but here's the problem. I know the equivalence between inches and centimeters, but not between inches and meters. So I've got to do one step first. Before I can convert from centimeters to inches, I have to convert from meters to centimeters. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a scale conversion first, then a system conversion. Now, if you're looking at a problem like this, that's kind of how you have to think. You have to see meters and inches, so you know you need to do an inter-system conversion. But then you think of all the inter-system conversions you know or that you're given. And in a previous example here, we were given 2.54 centimeters per inch. Centimeters per inch. This is meters. That tells me first thing I need to do is go from meters to centimeters, then I can use my centimeters per inch. So I've got two steps, scale conversion from meters to centimeters, and then system conversion from centimeters to inch, and I end up with 98 inches. Okay, that's my step four, that's my fourth type of, of 
factor label problem. Step six, this is a three-step problem. Now this is almost as, as uh, complicated as it gets. So here I'm going to convert from 0.25 cubic meters of gold to pounds. Now this is fairly complicated. Look at this. I'm going from a volume to a mass. Technically this is a weight, but we'll consider it a mass for this for the purposes of this exercise. So I'm going from a volume to a mass. That means I need a dimensional conversion. Okay. I'm also going from metric to English, which means I'm going to need a system conversion here. Now when I look at what I'm given here, 454 grams per pound, all right, I can kind of get the impression that, and also I got to remember that in a previous example I was given 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter for the density of gold. Now, now how would I know that I need that? Because I'm going from a volume to a mass and I know from from the previous example um, that I that I need to use a density for that. So I'm going to start off with 0.25 cubic meters. Now it would be nice if I could go right from cubic meters to pounds, but I don't have that conversion. I do have grams per cubic centimeter, so that means I need to go to cubic centimeters first. So I'm going to use a scale conversion to go from a large unit, cubic meters, to a smaller unit, cubic centimeters. Then I'm going to use my density, which is a dimensional conversion, to get from cubic centimeters to grams of gold. From there, I can use my inter-system conversion from grams to pounds to get to my final answer of 1.1 times 10 to the fourth pounds, or 11,000 pounds. All right, so with these combinations of these steps, you can, you can come up with any kind of dimensional analysis or any kind of uh, factor label problem you can you can solve using this now there may be times when you have more than three conversion factors this is one two three conversion factors for example if I had to go from cubic meters or say from from cubic millimeters to cubic centimeters then I might start going I might start by going from cubic millimeters to cubic meters to cubic centimeters that would add another conversion factor or the other way that you might get more conversion factors is if there's a denominator here under cubic meters that I also need to convert. We saw this in the example in which we were converting the speed of light from meters per second to miles per hour, where we had to convert both the numerator and the denominator. So if we were doing that, we might have additional conversion factors. But these are the three basic types. Scale conversion, going from a, a larger unit to a smaller unit, or vice versa. Dimensional conversion, going from volume to mass, or from distance to time, or time to distance, or mass to volume, and so forth and a system conversion going from English to metric, metric to English, and vice versa. And they might not always be in this, in this order, but these are the three basic types. Hope you find that helpful. Good luck with your factor label method.